Welcome to our presentation on evaluating the AAU initiative on e-learning capacity building that was done for Lupane State University based in Zimbabwe using open educational resources and Moodle during the height of the pandemic. My name is Anot Dumotlamini and I'm the Director of ICT Services, Communications and Knowledge Management at the Association of African Universities in Ghana, and I coordinated this initiative. Next. The AAU initiative was to provide educational technology virtual training using the Moodle Learning Management System and as I said, open educational resources. It was accelerated by the advent of the global COVID-19 pandemic. The AAU recruited over 90 Moodle experts via Facebook to support uh, this initiative. These uh, Moodle experts supported the initiative as facilitators, mentors, uh, server teams, and also evaluation team. We worked uh, with the uh, Image Africa in terms of repurposing the materials for online delivery. These materials had been previously produced for another EduTech initiative for the University of Eduardo Monjane in Mozambique. Lupane State University already had its own learning management system called Moodle, and we also in integrated the big blue button. Next. Uh, concerning the evaluation questions, we focused on evaluating materials, whether the materials were fit for purpose. We also looked at the facilitator roles, how effective was our Facebook crowdsourced method of appointing facilitators, mentors, and other support personnel. We also looked at the process in terms of its efficiency and effectiveness and also appropriateness. Overall, the AAU was also trying to understand whether this initiative would be repeatable or scalable for the benefit of thousands of African faculty that required it. We also wanted to understand whether LSU needs uh, were being met or had been met by this uh, initiative. Uh, next. Concerning the methods uh, that we used to gather the data, we used quite a diverse uh, set of methods. Uh, these methods included surveys, uh, reflections on blogs, uh, looking at the charts within the big blue button and also looking at the Moodle frequently asked questions and the forums on Moodle, such as the Tech Help Forum. We also looked at the Moodle logs and WhatsApp groups that we had set up uh, for this purpose. There were also evaluations at done at the end of the training, uh, completed by the participants and another completed by the facilitator. Uh, over to you, Brenda. Thank you, Naduma. Um, I'm Brenda Mallinson. I'm a learning technologies and OER consultant based in Johannesburg. Um, I'm also affiliated to Rhodes University. So my role in this AAU initiative was as overall facilitator coordinator. Uh, I am also working on that EdTech UEM project in Mozambique mentioned by Madumo. So my additional role in this training was to convert the materials from blended to fully online provision. So first, let's look at the learn these learning materials uh, that we used. Uh, how we chose them is that we had no time or money to develop anything new, so we considered the Learn Moodle 3.8 MOOC, but it was about to be discontinued uh, to start the later version. 
Uh, and that would have been purely how to use Moodle training, which is valuable, but we wanted something more. So we went for this, these materials from the project, which were more holistic around ed tech using Moodle and OER. So uh, each stage that we're looking at here represents one week of the training. Uh, and this followed the original uh, framework. Uh, so our mode of provision was 100% online using Big Blue Button and Moodle. And we quickly needed to transform these materials. We got permission for early OER release from the EdTech UEM project uh, from their stakeholders. So what we need to look at now is were those materials fit for purpose? So I think the thing to note is that the materials had already been through several stages of piloting, we'd revised, we had translations in English and Portuguese. So we were able to quickly transform them uh, for 100% online provision supported by the Emerge Africa network. Our context was low bandwidth uh, or else an unstable, sometimes unreliable internet connections. And this is for both our facilitators and our participants. Uh, so these are some feedback that we received from the facilitators. They felt the activities and resources shared had a positive effect on the outcomes. Uh, the wonderful thing about having these experienced Moodle facilitators was that they each contributed additional resources as we moved along through those topics. That was very valuable. Uh, other feedback is that we, we did use the Learn Moodle videos. We used the 3.5, which at the time, that was the uh, Lupani State University's version. We used PowerPoint, we used OER. Uh, the Moodle tool guide was fabulous as always. And our design methodology was using the seven Cs from the University of Leicester. From the participant view, they felt the training materials and activities really spoke to the deeper understanding of both the theoretical and the practical aspects of online learning. And uh, we used different formats and that had a positive effect uh, on, on the outcomes. Uh, so I'm handing over to Karen. Hello everyone. My name is Karen Ferreira Mayers. Uh, I am working at the Institute of Distance Education in the small kingdom of Eswatini. And um, I was part of the facilitator group. But before we look at feedback from the facilitator survey, it's useful to just think a little bit about what online facilitation is. Online facilitation is the technique of enabling and promoting learning in an online environment. We do that by means of encouraging interaction with and between participants and also supporting interactive online learning activities. Facilitating includes communicating, encouraging, supporting and informing. And uh, on the right hand side of your screen, you have a screenshot from the Padlet that we used to hold our end of course meeting and you view there some of the participants, some of the facilitators and mentors who were assisting us in this project. Now, as the team of facilitators, we needed to take on several roles. We needed to step into different shoes and that was very important. So how did we get recruited? Um, as Nodumo indicated, Facebook was used to send out a post looking for Moodle experts with expertise and experience in course design and development, online facilitation, but also Moodle server admin. So what did um, we find with respect to facilitator expertise, interaction, guidance? The facilitators indicated that over and above their assigned duties, most facilitators took on additional tasks when needed. So that showed that they were really committed to the project and to the process of uh, facilitating learning. The facilitators also indicated that they received extremely good guidance, both from the overall facilitator, which was Brenda Mallinson, 
from the AAU, which was headed by um, Nojo Modlamini for this project, and from the different stage leaders. So the facilitators in general were very positive about their level of active involvement. The participants also had something to say about what they saw the facilitators do. They appreciated the well-coordinated facilitator facilitation, the fact that facilitators helped each other out and uh, were a highly motivated team. They, the participants found it helpful to freely ask questions on different platforms. That's WhatsApp, that's Moodle, uh, that's the big blue button platform and get immediate responses from the facilitators. So they really enjoyed the engagement during the presentations, the screen sharing, the various demonstrations that were given. And they liked, they especially liked how the facilitators supported each other during the live sessions. So we know that um, there were uh, about 90 odd facilitators and mentors, 38 responded to the facilitator survey, which was post-training, and uh, I have shared the views with you. Now, overall, what can we say about the facilitator's point of view? First of all, there are universal principles that apply when it comes to online facilitation, but Elements of local context and personal learning are crucial when it comes to really bringing something positive to the table. We were a team of committed and dynamic facilitators, communicating regularly, planning before the start of each week, and planning around each individual's strengths and weaknesses, and that afforded us the opportunity to assist each other. Now, the post-training reflection through the survey and through some follow-up discussions allowed all the team members to identify further elements for improvement, which means that the next time we do this, we will be doing an even better job. I want to highlight that all the team members were volunteers who put in a lot of time and effort, which all helped to make this training a success. Support from all different angles, via the WhatsApp groups, but uh, also via emails on the Moodle platform and through the chat and the big blue button interactions. And it's now over to Patrick. Thank you, Karen. My name is uh, Patrick Njeroge from EduTab Africa. I was one of the support facilitators during this uh, training. And I'll be speaking about the mode of uh, provision. And to begin with, this was, this training was purely internet dependent. Everything was done remotely by the facilitators and also the, and also the, the participants of this, uh, of this training. And one of the things that made this possible was the, was the fact that uh, the staff at the Pana State University were able to mitigate challenges that included power cuts by ensuring that there were backups such as generators. And also they ensured that there was data for the participants to use during this, uh, during this training. And uh, this training was synchronous. Uh, there was elements of synchronous and also as asynchronous because we had two live meetings every day, whereby we introduced topics in the morning and then had, uh, had practical sessions in the afternoon. And this made everything easier because there was more, we, we promoted engagement when we had the sequoias and also the unsequoias because it gave the participants more time to work on different, uh, different assignments, especially in the practical sessions. And then uh, these, th there was an aspect of groups. How did we group the, how, how did we group the, the, the participants? The participants were assigned to groups on Moodoo and WhatsApp. And, and this is because 
we have big numbers which were around 240 participants. And therefore, we needed to have teams so that there could be engagement and also there could be feedback between the facilitating teams and also the participants so that they could get maximum support. And so we had to divide them into groups in, uh, on WhatsApp. And uh, the participants systematically implemented what they had learned within their new online course through the training, like I said earlier, because of the practical sessions in the afternoon. And this was made possible uh, because of the support that, that they, the, the facilitators were able to give, give uh, the participants. Next slide. Uh, question three speaks about the efficiency and also the effectiveness of the mode of provision, like I said earlier, which was uh, purely online. Uh, internet connection was one of the biggest hindrances, not only for the, for, for the participants, but also for the facilitators. For example, in Zimbabwe, uh, the internet is very, very expensive. It's considered to be among the top three countries in Africa where internet is expensive because it goes at around $75 for one GB, which makes it uh, difficult to, to, to get to learn. And, and therefore, this was one of the things that was highlighted by the, particip by the participants. And, and also, not only, it's being, not only it being expensive, also the internet speeds could affect the way that training is conducted. And then uh, findings with respect to the suitability of a uh, mode of provision within the context of uh, Lupane University. And uh, from this, we collected feedback from the facilitators and also from the participants. And uh, the facilitators found the resources useful and relevant. And because this is because the, the resources were in different formats, like we said earlier, and uh, also the fact that they, were, that they were chat rooms, it was something that was appreciated because this allowed for, for feedback within, within the sessions. And uh, apart from that, the facilitators thought that the introductions should be allocated longer time so that there can be a space to allow, there can be a space to have, um, to, to, for improvement in case there are any challenges within this introductory period. And then uh, the participants' view about, about, uh, about the efficiency and effectiveness of the mode of provision, like I said earlier, was one of, the, one of it was the slow and high cost of internet. And then the participants appreciated the fact that there were recordings and uh, repeat sessions in the afternoon because this allowed them to have a more, more depth, more depth in the, when they're looking at the, at the things they were able to learn and also the things they could be able to implement in their, in their online sessions later on. And then uh, they found this process to be effective because it enabled them to acquire skills on uh, e-learning and also content development because it was something uh, because through the materials that they were provided for and also through the sessions that we had, they found this to be something that could help them improve when they go to the actual delivery and also the actual content development. Over to Mike Umbo. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, my name is Michael Mumbo from EduTab Africa, from the Republic of Kenya. I was also part of this uh, training as uh, one of the, of the trainers of, in this particular exercise. One activity that we really appreciated is the feedback, the overall participants' feedback, which was really key in all the four different stages. But how did we gather all this feedback to enable us to move forward in a positive way? We had individual stage evaluations where we are picking out some of the critical incidences or we are looking at some of the key components that really needed redress. It was clear that uh, some participants have uh, overlapping work-related duties that was sort of bringing 
uh, a challenge, especially in attendance, because when we're looking at their feedback, it could be both negative or positive. So we are looking at how this board can help us move forward in a positive way. Having mid midweek reflective blogs, um, we we realize that uh, also in as much as we are moving forward with this, lack of technical uh, devices, so basically gadgets for learners, can be a hindrance, especially on the effectiveness of delivery of such kind of training or organized training. Another way we are getting this feedback is through the big blue button. Um, since this platform allows live chats during the presentations, the participants really appreciated the live feedback they got, and this really, really uh, supported our moving forward. Another important uh, tool in our current age is the WhatsApp. So we have these uh, categories. So it, it, the way they were grouped in, in, in various WhatsApp enables the participants to have that direct chat, direct interaction with the mentors or the facilitators of this training. And this really improved that teamwork and support from other group members. Otherwise, thank you and I welcome Dr. Um, uh, Mafosa. Uh, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, my name is Dr. Vusumu Zimaposa. I'm the director of ICT department at Dropane State University. And our department uh, provided all the technical support uh, during the module training. A total of 228 participants had enrolled uh, for the training and 215 participants successfully completed the training, giving us a completion percentage of 94%. Certificates will be issued at the end of the semester after evaluating how these lecturers are actually implementing um, what they learned. All the new programs at Lupane State University and new courses have been loaded in Moodle and all the lecturers are now using this platform. Plans have been put in place to establish a center uh, to coordinate technology-based uh, teaching and learning, but due to budgetary constraints, uh, this has not taken place. One challenge that we witnessed uh, during the training is that staff had problems with accessing teaching equipment, uh, such as laptops, uh, and the institution uh, is put in plans to provide uh, such equipment uh, to the lecturers. Again, the university has been acquiring data for the lecturers. Um, as we know that Zimbabwe is one of the highest, uh, is one of the highest data rates um, uh, in the region. Uh, currently, we're also assisting students to also access subsidized sub data uh, on their own. And we've also approached um, internet service providers for zero rating of educational content. In terms of institutional policies, uh, we've draft drafted these policies and they await approval. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kari Fandovo from Lopania State University and ICTS Department. I was the one who's, I'm the one who's sponsored both the e-learning platform at Lopania State University. So I'll talk about uh, the technical view of the training. I'll start with in-training support. The model of frequent ask questions. We created a platform for frequent ask questions so that the participants could interact with each other on some of the questions that they might not uh, have clarity on. This helped uh, the participants to appreciate more the system since uh, there, was, there was a platform where they could uh, attend to each other as participants. And if uh, it meant, if it, if it was a bit complicated, then the participants, the mentors and the lead facilitators could chip in and help. So that was the purpose of the Moodle Frequent Ask Questions. Then we created another tech hub forum. Uh, the tech hub forum uh, 
this one we included it in our training courses so that you could help uh, the participants who be having issues like login issues or maybe having incorrect hyperlinks so that you can fix them. It was also monitored by me, by, by Mrs. I'm the one who's administering the e-learning platform at the university. So some of the questions that we asked uh, on the tech help forum were like how to access course, how to log in, uh, how to edit the story part of a template, maybe if you want to upload uh, private files, or if you're having a wrong course aside, how to go about it. So I was the one who was attending all those issues. Then with the individual LSU support, uh, on this one, uh, the participants could uh, interact with me via the WhatsApp platform or via my email or via the mobile platform since each had the chat facility so that I could help them. So the questions which also came up on the individual LSU platform were issues like how, on how to log in, link, uh, the correct link or how to, how to use the, the platform. Since you know it was uh, a new thing to most of the guys, uh, the, the issue of online learning, so we had to be patient with them. So some they needed uh, individual assistance. Then when it comes to server enhancement, we managed to tweak our server a little bit uh, by introducing the big blue button, which we used as the online facility for everyone to be able to be in a position to interact with everyone. And the big blue button is turned out to be a marvel to all the students and lecturers, especially for their online learning courses, because it makes it easy for them to interact with the lecturers since they're in a position to say the slides which will be what should be being uh, shown by the lecture as it was happening during the training course. For the longer term planning, we are planning uh, to have another server for e-learning so that uh, in case the one that we're having is, uh, is now full or is you know, experiencing more traffic, we can easily switch on to another server so that we try by all means to give uh, the students uh, what they really deserve when it comes to online learning. That's for me for now, I'm handing over to, to Noto. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, in summary and conclusion, this AAU initiative was conceived out by a Pan-African Association for provision at a Southern African higher education institution called Lupane State Universities. It was supported by volunteer African Mutu experts using materials developed for another Southern African university called Eduardo Montlani Universities. The materials we use were originally in Portuguese, but with the assistance of Image Africa, they were transformed uh, to English and they were also transformed for fully online uh, provision. We believe that the institution that we supported benefited immensely uh, from this uh, in initiative. I would like to thank you for listening to us and we hope uh, to meet you uh, in the on online environment to be able to respond to your questions. Thank you very much. So it's now time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for having listened to us and hope to see you soon. Bye. And goodbye from Brenda. Goodbye from Nodumo. Thank you. Goodbye from Mike Mumbo. Thank you. Bye from Patrick Njeroga. Thank you very much. Goodbye from someone. Goodbye from Kalifan Lovu.